Um, I want to turn to uh, Mr. Brito Cruz. Um, the, Brazil is, is one of the great uh, success stories in the world um, uh, with astonishing economic growth. Um, but uh, I think as most of us have observed Brazil and its uh, foreign policy, its, its stance in the world, it's been a country that's resisted uh, being uh, in the sphere of hegemony of the United States, certainly, but also uh, of Europe. It's a, a country proud to be part of the, of the global south. And so I want to ask you whether uh, you as a, as a Brazilian diplomat trying to think about how you plan your policy are entirely comfortable with the idea of a wider Atlantic in which there's a dialogue about, about security, about all sorts of issues that includes Europe, the United States, Brazil, Morocco, uh, et cetera. Uh, is that, is that going to be a, a comfortable transition for Brazil? You're, you're right to say that uh, there is indeed a feeling of uh, optimism in Brazil today. Uh, Brazil, Brazilians, I think, feel uh, much confident uh, about the way they should look at the world, about the way they assess their options. And uh, as regards the Atlantic in Brazil, we tend to think of the Atlantic mostly and first of all in terms of the South Atlantic, uh, because it is for us a sort of immediate neighborhood. And uh, in this context, if you uh, take a look at what happened with uh, relations between Brazil and Africa over the last 10 years, uh, it did not start uh, 10 years ago, but it increased. Uh, you will see that uh, Brazil has really made a strong investment in terms of uh, personnel and uh, public resources to strengthen uh, our relations with uh, a great number of African countries. And uh, the idea of the South Atlantic to us comes to mind uh, mainly as this uh, common space which joins us together uh, with Africa. And I think uh, we heard here today, and I think it's very important to understand that, to understand the new trends. And I think one of the most <laughs> important trends in the current uh, moment is that Africa is becoming uh, a sort of a new land of opportunity. And uh, it, Africa has been uh, shifting from being part of the problem to being part of the solution. And uh, Brazil has understood that. And uh, this is the reason why we have today 36 embassies in Africa. And we will have 37 uh, before the year is over. So uh, this is uh, f uh, one first point. Uh, the second point I would like to make uh, in reply to your question is that I think the new, uh, the new situation which we find today in international relations is characterized by a multiplicity of identities, a multiplicity of groups. Uh, if, you, uh, if you take a look of, at uh, the case of Brazil, Brazil is a Latin American country, it is a South American country, it is engaged in a very uh, ambitious project of integration with our neighbors in South America. Uh, we are also participating in different groupings, like the BRICS with uh, China, Russia, India and South Africa, or the IPSA with South Africa and India. And what's interesting is that in each of these groupings, uh, we find a different agenda. We, we find different uh, ways of building consensus and contributing. So, so. If I could just uh, pause the question for a moment. Before uh, turning, turning on, uh, we understand that Brazil is entirely comfortable as a leader of the South Atlantic. And has, and has been that, and has been forging ties with South Africa and the African continent. 
What I'm curious about is whether you're also comfortable with the idea of being part of One Atlantic, because that One Atlantic, I think, is at the center of this discussion. I, I understand the comfort level with Brazil and the Global South, but what about Brazil in this wider world? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, it's, uh, it's really a new question, because if you compare what uh, the situation is in the North Atlantic and the South Atlantic, uh, at least from my point of view, I find important differences. I find similarities as well and commonalities. But there are important differences. In, in the North Atlantic, uh, you have, uh, first of all, uh, a military alliance, which is uh, sort of became synonymous with the North Atlantic. In the South Atlantic, what you have is uh, what, what we call a zone of peace and cooperation, where, where we precisely we try to exclude uh, the idea of militarization and, or the idea of military alliances. So uh, when we start to discuss the question, which is a very interesting one, I think we have to start from reality. And reality is what I, uh, I, I, I'm trying to point out, is that uh, you have to understand that the situation in the South Atlantic is indeed very different. Uh, the North Atlantic is a, 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 an ocean that joins together two of the most developed uh, parts of the world. North America and Western Europe. Uh, the South Atlantic brings together two parts of the developing world, two parts of the South. And uh, those are important differences. That does not mean that you could not uh, envisage uh, a possibility of, uh, of course, Brazil has an Atlantic uh, identity as well. We have a number of identities. But uh, uh, that does not mean that you were able to uh, start building new institutions, etc. Well, so uh, it, that, you can start the discussion, but you, you don't know where you will end. I'm going to come back to the dreaded uh, four-letter acronym uh, NATO uh, in a minute, but I'm going to turn to Ambassador Shannon. Um, I, I, I uh, mentioned the P word, pivot, um, which uh, been the talk of Washington and to some extent the talk of Europe uh, this year. But I want to ask you about, about mental maps uh, for this administration and, and in terms of the Washington policy community generally. Um, you've thought a lot about this idea of a wider Atlantic, I know, from uh, my conversations with Craig Kennedy. But what's your sense about thinking in Washington? Do you think that, that the Washington policy community is ready to think of a North Atlantic and South Atlantic together and begin to draw the security parallels from that? Yeah, the short answer is yes. Uh, the, the longer answer, obviously, is that a pivot really involves a rebalancing of uh, attention and resources and a recognition that China's rise, not only in Asia but globally, uh, presents huge opportunities and challenges to the United States and a variety of other partners. And therefore, we need, as we emerge from warfare in Iraq and Afghanistan, to focus more of our attention and resources into the Pacific. Uh, but it doesn't mean a diminution of interest in the Atlantic. I mean, the, the Atlantic is historic for us, obviously. Uh, and not just the North Atlantic, but also the South Atlantic. But I think what is driving this uh, rethinking of, of mental maps regarding the larger Atlantic is really the emergence of Brazil and South America as significant global players. And José Humberto has, has described well uh, Brazil's emergence, but what has, has struck us uh, is not only the, the increasing presence of Brazil uh, in Africa and building off of uh, demographic and cultural links uh, to build commercial and investment links that are, are beneficial uh, not only to Brazil but to a variety of Brazil's partners, the United States uh, included, but also what we've seen more broadly in terms of of political, economic, and social developments in Brazil and broadly in Latin America. I mean, if you look at the countries which historically in, in the Americas that have had connections in the Atlantic, it's been Canada, the United States, Mexico, and Brazil, with some Uruguayan and Argentine interest. But as Latin America has moved from authoritarian governments to democratic governments, from closed economies to open economies, from import substitution in our Tarkic development models to regional integration, and from largely uh, international isolation to globalization, 
the impact has been significant, at least in terms of how the United States understands the role of, of Brazil uh, broadly within the Americas and, and in the Atlantic. And we, we see uh, Brazil and South America and other countries in Latin America as presenting uh, an interesting model and option uh, across the Atlantic and beyond into Central Asia uh, because they've shown that markets and, markets and democracy deliver development. They show that markets and democracy can address long-term social inequities, whether it be poverty, inequality, or social exclusion, and they can do it in a peaceful fashion. And also, the kind of diplomacy that we've seen more broadly in the Americas, uh, which Brazil has played such an important part in leading, uh, is the diplomacy that has addressed border disputes and addressed nuclear weapons programs and the closing down of nuclear weapons programs and the monitoring of nuclear weapons programs through negotiation in peaceful um, uh, fashions, uh, which, which means effectively that it is a region that is attempting to assert itself globally through soft power. And for us, that's huge. I mean, as, as we address larger security issues elsewhere in the world, as we try to convince our partners around the world uh, that military projection and nuclear weapons are not necessarily the best road for international influence, um, countries like Brazil and South America can play a very important role. And the, the linkages they're building across the southern Atlantic, I think, are going to allow us to rethink broadly our whole picture of the Atlantic. Because although the North Atlantic Alliance was the product of warfare and the consequences of warfare and, and, and the competition with the Soviet Union, uh, the, the, the Southern Atlantic and the New Atlantic is really a product of opportunity. And I think in that, in that sense, um, my colleagues in Washington are very prepared to rethink the Atlantic.